Northern California versus Southern California, which is truly better and what's the difference? Okay, this is a big debate, a rivalry, if you will, that is hotly contested by those of us born and bred in California, which includes yours truly. Home is always gonna be home. The two or three, honestly, I'd argue, parts of the states are distinct from one another in so many ways, from culture to landscape to climate to industry. So if you're planning a trip to California and have limited time, how do you know which one to explore? Or if you're from here and need to settle a debate, I'm here for you too. I've explored every single county in California what is this? I was born and raised in Southern California and I now live in the Tahoe area near Northern California. I did all of my schooling in California and I know the Golden State through and through. So first let's start with how to divide California. Now people who aren't in the know will just draw a line between Monterey, Tulare, and Inyo counties and they say that that divides Northern and Southern California. But oh no, I would say that there is a distinct Central California and anyone who's from here would agree with you. So this is how I would draw those lines. The central part of California is where most of the agriculture is and that's what we consider Central California. I hate to be harsh, but it's usually just somewhere you drive through, though Inyo County has Death Valley in the Alabama Hills and San Luis Obispo has a gorgeous coastline, but otherwise it's not a part of the state I'd spend much time in. My deepest apologies to anyone I've offended, but you know it's true. So let's talk about the highlights of Northern California. Now as a Southern Californian, I'm going against the grain by saying that Northern California is wonderful, but it really truly is. Everything here is so beautiful. From the wildlife to the beaches, mountains, and trees, there's just so much to love about this part of the state. Starting in the north, Humboldt County. Did you know that California is home to the tallest tree, that's the coastal redwood, the largest, which is the sequoia, and the oldest, which is the bristlecone pine? You can see them all in Northern California, but few are as impressive as the coastal redwoods in Humboldt County. Wow, this feels so nice. Mm. You've got national parks and forests here, and it's a quieter and less populated part of the state. So nice, I've been back probably seven times. Next, Mendocino. The coast might be rockier, wilder, and less tempting to swim in up north, but that doesn't mean it's not worth visiting. Mendocino is one of my favorite parts of California. Whether the Fort Bragg area, including Newport Ranch, or in the Mendocino proper, there are so many dreamy state parks, cute B&Bs, romantic hotels, incredible sunset bluffs. I just can't stop going back. I mean, check out this glass beach in Fort Bragg with sea glass covering the sand. I don't think there's anything quite like it in the world. Yes, it is a former dump and that's why there's so much glass there, but you don't need to think about that when you're there visiting because now it's just beautiful and there's full of seals, there's lots of wildlife there, and I think that we've turned a corner in terms of it being a dump and now it's just this beautiful area that people love to visit for the sunset. Yosemite. Yosemite is world famous for good reason. The glacier carved valley is so dramatic, it's become one of the most visited national parks in the whole country. Growing up, this is one of the spots that we visited almost every summer and it holds some of my dearest memories. Here you'll find the tallest waterfall in North America, Yosemite Falls, and some of the most photographed parts of the state. If you love hiking, Yosemite will steal your heart. And wintertime there is magical as well when it can be coated in snow. Lake Tahoe, where I now live, has quickly become one of the most popular parts of the state. The Caribbean blue of the lake and the incredible clarity of the water make it such a stunning area really at any season. Plus, there's plenty of hiking and backpacking around here, so whether you're visiting in the summer or the winter, there's plenty to do year-round. The Bay Area. Now, the debate gets most heated when those from the Los Angeles area are comparing with those in the Bay Area. Personally, I can't understand why anyone would want to pay Bay Area prices to have to wear a coat in July due to the fog, but that's just coming from someone who is used to spending summers in the sand and the water in Southern California. Honestly, which sounds better to you? Okay, debates aside, I can understand why so many visitors like San Francisco. Although the public transport system isn't great, it's much better than anything else in the state. You can actually get around San Francisco without needing a car, and many of my European friends say it reminds them of home. The history and culture of San Francisco is charming to many, just not me. Next, Mammoth Lakes. This area is fantastic for hiking in the summer and skiing in the winter. There are also hot springs and plenty of other things to do in Mammoth that aren't skiing, including the Hot Creek Geological Site, which is honestly so cool. Next is Big Sur. It's just south of Monterey on the California coast, and I honestly recommend this entire stretch of coastline if you can do a Pacific Coast Highway drive, absolutely do it. Big Sur is famous for being a bougie place to stay, but it's for good reason because it is just truly stunning. You've got the purple sand beaches, and truly this sand is purple. I am not kidding you, it's pretty impressive. You've got McWay Falls and Julia Pfeiffer Burns State Park, and you've still got redwoods even this far south. Welcome to Death Valley, boys and girls. Death Valley. I'm honestly not sure which part of the state to consider Death Valley, but you absolutely have to go there. It is so cool. There's so many cool rock formations. It's extremely colorful. I think people don't think of the desert as being somewhere with lots of colors, but Death Valley is definitely an exception to that. You've got the artist palette where you've got greens and pinks in the rock. You've got the Golden Canyon and Zabriskie Point. It's this striped rocked canyon that is beautiful to hike through. You've got the Badwater Basin, which is pure white salt. It's really cool at sunset and for stargazing. And let's not forget Kings Canyon and Sequoia National Parks. 
If you've stopped by the coast to see the tallest trees in the world, then you've got to see the biggest trees in the world in Sequoia National Park. Grants Grove is where you can find some of the biggest ones. One is even big enough to drive a car through. This is a beautiful park to see in the summertime, but also the winter when there's snow there is particularly magical. Okay, now let's talk about Southern California. I grew up in Southern California. I was born and raised in greater Los Angeles, got my bachelor's degree at the University of California, Santa Barbara, relocated to Newport Beach in Orange County for a few years, so it's safe to say I love this part of the state. Beautiful weather we're having. I love it. The beaches are warmer. I love the surf culture. And who doesn't love Disney? Here's what's best to do in Southern California, beginning with Santa Barbara. You guys, my heart will always be in Santa Barbara. It's where I attended university. It's in a perpetual spring that's never too hot or too cold. The mountains meet the sea here along the Pacific Coast Highway. And if you stare at the horizon long enough, you'll see dolphins playing in the waves. One day, I hope to retire here. Los Angeles. This is the county I was born and spent most of my life in or next to. It's a bustling metropolitan area that sprawls all the way to the desert with legendary traffic, a world-famous entertainment industry, and so much more. It's a hub for hundreds of cultures, artists, and neighborhoods that I absolutely think are worth exploring, provided you pick the right part of the city. Honestly, stay away from Hollywood and spend your time in Venice, Santa Monica, or Silver Lake, and you'll come away from it enjoying the experience. These are all funky neighborhoods with their own personality, and parts of them are even walkable, which is just not true for most of Los Angeles. Hike to the Hollywood sign, enjoy the beaches at any time of year, and you've got to experience a Korean spot. Also, do not leave Southern California without having Mexican food, particularly Los Angeles. It is the best in the world outside of Mexico. Joshua Tree National Park is another famous one for having a variety of yucca plant that only grows in the very specific elevations in the southwestern desert. The big event here is Joshua Trees, and I'm seeing them everywhere. It's not just the national park that draws people in, but the beautiful rock formations, great stargazing, and the quirky places to stay. We stayed at a 1970s themed place in 29 Palms. And it's like a retro dream. <laughs> you guys, it was truly one of the coolest days we've ever had. I felt like I was transported back in time and it also had this really cool pool with a cutout window. We are about to see honestly the best sunrise in California. Anza Borrego Desert State Park. The first time I even went to Anza Borrego wasn't until my late 20s, but since then I've been back four times. Although it's best visited with a four-wheel drive vehicle, there's still plenty to do in Anza Borrego, including desert blooms in March on a good year. The biggest draw for me though is all of the cool land formations. There's also art out in the desert that's just free to explore. And since it's a dark sky community, you can see some amazing stars out there without having to even leave town. Orange County is famous for its surf, Disneyland, high-end lifestyle, and some of the best and most famous beaches in Southern California. I grew up going to Newport Beach in the summers and moved there for four years in my early 20s and can vouch the beaches are truly beautiful. They're also very popular, as is Disneyland and many of Orange County's best things to do. My best tip is to visit in September when the summer is still in full swing but the kids are back in school. Even October and November can experience summery weather. Believe it or not, June or even July can be a wild card due to what locals call June gloom, which is a marine layer of fog that can roll in over the beach. If you're in the area, I absolutely recommend that you go to Laguna Beach. It's one of the most beautiful parts of Orange County, and it's also kind of an artsy community. San Diego. Finally, the southernmost part of the state along the coast is always worth a visit. San Diego experiences some of the warmest, best weather in the U.S., has some of the best tacos, and some of the best beaches as well. It's the third largest city in California and does experience traffic but not on the level of Los Angeles. Climate-wise, overall Southern California is much drier and hotter than Northern California. Although there are a few mountain areas like Julian near San Diego or Big Bear near Los Angeles that does get some snow and have pine trees, generally you'll find more palm trees than anything down south. Though Southern California is beautiful in its own way, the sandy deserts of the Mojave, the glittering beaches, it's got less natural beauty than Northern California in my opinion, despite how wrong it feels for me to say it. Although our ocean temperatures are never all that warm, which is surprising some visitors. Brave, brave souls. That is so cold. <laughs> Southern California beaches are much more swimmable with somewhat warmer water, fewer rocks, although the currents are really strong and the waves can be big, which is great news for surfers. Northern California experiences way more snow, rain, and cooler temperatures overall. You'll find more trees, greenery, lakes, and rural areas up north. Now let's talk about the culture. California is one of the most culturally diverse places on planet Earth. There are over 100 languages spoken in Los Angeles County alone. And when I talk about culture, although it certainly includes cultures from all around the world, you will find more of a beach oriented laid-back culture in Southern California. Northern California is laid back in some ways as well, but there's more of a tech-driven nature in the Bay Area and a more outdoorsy one up north. 
These are just my feelings and observations having spent so much time in California. Getting around. California is a pain to get around. The US in general is a pain to get around. There is not much public transportation and if you're used to being able to hop on a train or bus with ease, that's just not the case in California. Although the Bay Area is somewhat well connected, the metro in Los Angeles does not even go to the airport. It is tough trying to live in or travel through California without a car. It's even tough with a car because it's so common to run into traffic jams, unless you're hanging out in the far north or road tripping through the desert, which I do recommend. There's a lot of people who live here and rush hour is a real thing. It's just part of the experience and if you do plan exploring California, you'll want to factor in some potential traffic. So between Northern and Southern California, which is truly better? If you have time to explore both parts of the state, that is my best recommendation. They are quite different in terms of what you can see and do, but both are worth exploring. Personally, although I love exploring North Northern California and think it is one of the most beautiful places in the entire world, I will always love Southern California a little bit more for those amazing summers on the beach. There's no place like home.